this is Henry Kissinger. Yes, Henry, welcome. Thank you for coming. This is Max. Max, greetings. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, uh, let's start from um, the general questions. How do you see here the economy going now? What do, what do you see? From where I am seated at the moment, I see that the economy is in bad shape. It, it is fluctuating greatly, and that is uh -huh. not a good sign. Usually when it goes up and down so quickly, it's not a good sign. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, that means that it's unstable. And also I see that uh, in places around the world, there's many places uh, that it's inst unstable. Europe is another place that's actually looking rather shaky because right. of um, their new policies and their separations and uh, the way that they are handling these separations seems uh, rather dangerous, actually. Um, I just started reading your biography and... Uh... I just realized you might be connected to the earth energies and uh, through the dwarf energy, uh, through the dwarfs. The dwarfs? Yeah. Yes. You mean the, um, the fairies and elves and elementals? Yeah, through the earth elementals. And what brought you to that conclusion? Uh, the, the fact that you were short and your, your thinking was very grounded. That's true. There was a time in my past lives where I was very connected to elementals in many ways. But it is that I am, I'm still connected to them, but not like I once was. We are still very good friends, but I am in a different place now. And so I don't really need to, to attach to them like I once did. Uh-huh. So um, I'm thinking about Ferengi. Are you familiar with the energies of Ferengi? You mean from Star Trek? Yes. Yes, I know what the Ferengi are. So the, uh, the Ferengi were um, all about the profit. Yes. And, uh, and uh, the morals were um, almost non-existent. All the morals were about the profit. Well, they were and, about pleasure as well. And the profit and pleasure, if there was a choice, they would choose profit. Yes. Uh, so I'm, I'm studying the, the specifics of the global conspiracy, and I just realized that uh, the cabal is Ferengi in many ways. So Ferengi depicts the, the morals of cabal. It's all about profit. Yes. Like uh, financial elite, international bankers, they only care about profit. And, you know, they organize wars and famines and all other disasters to increase the profit. Of course. We could see that as well. Right. But so, you yes, worry go ahead. about uh, profit and about um, getting power. Power and right. profit. Right. And power so, was just as important in many cases because right. with the money comes the power and the power right. to get out of things if you've done something wrong or the power to change things if you don't like the way they do. These are the things that money can do. They change and they make the powerful even greater. Exactly. So, uh, you know, when, uh, you know, for me it was very, uh, how do you say, therapeutic, very healing to realize that, you know, it's not that we have been uh, ruled by completely negative energies, it's just these uh, energies are, uh, are more tuned to, to money and power, but, but they not necessarily, doesn't necessarily aim to destroy the system. 
No. They may be a little bit self-destructive, but they actually need the system to continue. Absolutely. They use the system uh, as a crutch, actually, to get what they need. And if, it, if it's not working for them, they have the money and power to change it sometimes if necessary. That doesn't always work, but it works a great deal of the time. And then they can use uh, the, the system as an excuse. They can say, it wasn't me, it was the system. They can say, it wasn't my fault, it was the system. So um, they use it as a scapegoat as well to get, a, to get uh, out of taking the blame for some of the problems. But they also use it to uh, to get what they need and create um, greater uh, wealth for themselves. You are gone. I hear nothing. I started studying your biography and and this biography is still 29 yet, so I didn't go much further. But I already noticed that you are well connected to Rockefeller Foundation, CIA, uh, FBI, and um, uh, a few other central things to the cabal. Yes. Right. So I assume it's, uh, you don't have to keep secrets anymore. You're not in danger, right? I am not in danger, no. But the secrets are different this day than they were that day. Right. So do you know who killed um, JFK? That, that was, um, that has to remain a secret. Really? It, it is something that your people must uncover for yourselves. But the thing is, it was uh, definitely a designed from a political standpoint. Oh, please continue. It was uh, definitely a, an assassination from a political standpoint. And that political standpoint was to that they wanted to protect the United States. They saw something different than was actually there. There were certain people that uh, feared that he would uh, get us into a world war. Uh -huh. and they feared uh, that he would also be, he was also very upfront about things. And so they also feared spill the beans about some of uh, some of the things that were happening that were not uh, not in the public eye but he did not agree with so he they thought that he would actually spill the beans about some of the illegal action that was happening within uh -huh. the CIA in different areas yes All right Um, so how much the aliens were involved at that time? Um, well, we tried not to let them get it too involved because exopolitics was not wise. In our opinion. Letting aliens get involved was sort of like inviting Russia to come in and talk, uh, do politics for us. And, it just wasn't logical to us to have them do anything for us that was very meaningful. So they didn't have a whole lot to do with um, our government. I know that they had some to do with some other governments, but we did not allow them to have much strength in this one. Uh, so I know you were an expert on Russia, and I just learned uh, uh, the rumor that it was uh, one of the Rockefellers who rep who displaced, uh, who took took off uh, Nikita Khrushchev. 
Do you know that story? Did many interesting things and were far more advanced than you can possibly imagine. They were also involved in uh, researching aliens and doing th this kind of work as well. The rockets uh -huh. had their hand in many unusual uh, situations. I am not sure if you were aware of that, but the Rockefellers also were uh, tried to fund alien activity. And I do mean alien. They tried to find out more about them and tried to bring them into uh, a great deal of uh, their work. They uh -huh. area, 50, area 51 and those kinds of places were very high interest to the Rockefellers. Uh, so were the Rockefellers, uh, uh, did they have the alien component of them, themselves? I believe they did, although they did not admit that that was part of their agenda or a part of who they were. They were very interested in the alien agenda. Uh, so who controls Putin? Putin was controlled for a while by reptilians, but is no longer controlled by any aliens. He is now back to a being uh, on his own. For a while there, they had taken him over and they had done some mind control over him. However, he has a great and strong mind and was uh, someone helped him to get that blockage and get that out of him. Uh, is he controlled now by international bankers? I would say he's controlled more by the Earth uh, foundations, yes, than he is by aliens. Um, is he controlled by international human human international bankers? Is he controlled by by cabal? How much is he, is he independent? How much is controlled? There's some control by the cabal, but he is he tries not to be controlled by the cabal. He gets very angry when they try to to control him. And they have been able to do that in some ways. He gets very angry about that. He does not want to be controlled by the cabal. He does not want to, he does not believe in their purposes necessarily all the way. And he wants to be more independent and do things his way. Uh, is he controlled by, by someone in Russia, some people in Russia, or is he well, pretty much on top? There are people in Russia that do have his ear. Let's put it that way. He listens to them, and I, he is not always controlled by them, but he does take advice from, there are several people that he does take advice from. And sometimes follows it. Um, right. Yeah, I so you suggest that he is pretty much independent but influenced by others. He is influenced by others because he wants to keep uh, in touch with a lot of different areas of the world, and he cannot do that on his own. He is independent, he's an independent thinker, but for his for gaining in information, he must depend on others. So therefore, when he is talking, when you're talking about what he knows, a lot of this information comes from other sources, and he must believe them because he has no other source. And so uh, in that way, he becomes dependent on certain people for information because he wants to keep his finger on the pulse of the world. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Uh-huh. So therefore, with him being so involved in his governmental work, the information that comes to him about the United States, England, Europe, and, uh, China, Japan, uh, are from outside sources to some extent. Of course, he, keeps his, he has some direct ties to these places. But when he is working in the country and doing other things, he uses others' 
uh, for sources of information and does rely on those heavily. Right. I would assume that CIA should be able to 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 be to penetrate Kremlin. I mean, there were so many opportunities for them. They have they have penetrated the Kremlin, and the Kremlin has penetrated them as well. All right. So, what do you think about the future of? Go ahead. There are so many double spies these days, more than ever before. There's those that have no loyalty in this day and age, and are are double spies for both sides, and they uh -huh. make money doing so. But I, it's amazing to me how many there are these days because in the past that would have been very treasonous, but they don't care these days as much. I would assume that uh, there should be some organization, some uh, force above Putin and above Trump, which would control both of them. Organization, no. What they are controlled by is information and money. Uh -huh. And um, actually, Trump is controlled by other things as well. He, is tr he has technology in his favor as well. And so does Putin to some extent, but more Trump than Putin. I just... Um... I don't know, somehow my mind jumped to Elon Musk. And um, I assume that he couldn't get that far in his business without coordinating it with, uh, with the cabal and international bunkers. What do you think so? It's not necessary to coordinate with the cabal. The co mm -hmm. cabal, after hearing their decisions, will change their actions to interfere with or go along with the decisions of those in higher classes and parties. If they like what they see, they will support it. If they do not, they will start a something that, that goes against it, that makes it un-American uh, un or un-Russian or something that will stop it. At least they feel that way. They do not cooperate with directly with these presidents or with these powers. So um, your first contact with CIA was very early. You were um, you were basically, I think, uh, when, when you were serving in Germany as an interpreter. You were directly working for for um, for them. You were you were hired by them. Yes. Yes. So it was 1945. So very early. Yes. And I don't think these ties, you know, faded in in any way, right? So you were connected to them all the time. Correct. Um. So I think uh, for Musk, the hardest time, as he mentioned, was 2008, when his both companies were about to uh, go bankrupt. And um, immediately after he recovered, he was given uh, the promise by the military to, to help, basically to, to give him a, a big order for uh, his, uh, his rockets. So I assume maybe at that time he was also um, contracted one way or another. He was helped in many ways. Right. I did not agree with the way he was helped, but it, it did work out to the benefit of the United States. Right. But I, I really like what he's doing. I think, uh, I'm not sure Cabal likes what he's doing, but I think he's very politically correct, even though he's doing very advanced stuff. It's, it's still in line with the, with the globalist Cabal's 
international banking plans, I think. Well, in, in many ways, they tapped, they made it part of their involvement. They uh -huh. saw that, uh, they saw the company failing, but then they saw the opportunity to benefit from it, and so they did help and t uh, to help recover. And they did, after that, get in directly involved. At the same time, he was a consultant or he was an advisor on governmental committees. So I think that was the time when he was making the deal with the military, I think. That was also part of the cabal that was um, working indirectly with him, yes, from the military side. Right. Um, so what do you think about the future of Russia? Russia has still wonderful energies and amazing people, although the, there is a lot of corruption. There is, uh, in, in that swamp, there are wonderful flowers that still, uh, still grow there. I see that um, many countries are in the same situation. They are corrupt, but yet there are some very good parts to them. Uh, energies backing them. And the United States is the same way. Very corrupt, but very yet advanced. And uh, it, it has a two faces, just like Russia, just like many of these countries. They have the face of wonderful goodness helping their people, but then they have the dark face that is actually very corrupt as well. So, um, what do you see in the future? What are the opportunities? I think the opportunities for Russia? Yeah. I think there are many opportunities. They have technologies that are, and scientific discoveries that are advancing as, as well as the United States. But they have, um, they, uh, have a greater advantage in Russia with the sciences because they support them much more in some ways. No, the science is completely messed up. Yes, yeah. You're, not, you're looking at the, you're not looking at the government scientists. Oh, right. You mean, yeah, it's all basically, it's all went secret. Right. The government scientist program is a very advanced program. The I see. That are freelance in but the government scientific program is doing very well. I mean, the secret government program. There is a public government program which is uh, completely messed up, and yes. I assume that uh, there are closed programs, secret ones, which are still they still are funded, very, very still funded. Much. Yes. The secret ones are very advanced, just as the United States secret programs are also very advanced. Now, there are other programs in the United States that are doing very well as also, but um, the money that they poured into the secret programs in Russia are is quite a bit. I didn't realize that. I thought it's all dead, but yeah, I can, I can, I can imagine they still do that, yeah. And there they, was some cities. Have, the thing is, if they have the control and over it, then they will support it 100%. If they have no control, then they let it fall. All right. All right. Uh, in terms of telepathy, uh, do you see the, which country is closest to develop uh, telepathic communities? interesting question. There are parts of every country that have people that are close to uh, developing telepathy. They are in seemingly little areas of what you call them. They're like little communities of thought. And say human colony where you are part of. Many people there are closer to 
telepathy than, say, other part, other uh, sites. But still, it is a ways away for telepathy. Empathy is close by. You would, were you telepathic? Um, how much could you read minds? I could not really read minds, but I could read body language. I could read, uh, I could tell by how people said certain things, what, what they were hiding and how, I, I was very developed with uh, psychology. So my, it was more psychological than it was uh, psych, psychic. I, I was very good at reading people. Um, were you good at influencing people telepathically? I was good at influencing people because I, I made a lot of sense. Uh, you did, you did. And you could make a lot of sense in any situation, in any direction, which was... Is that, uh, that was absolutely correct. I could talk on both sides of the information because when you know the information very well, you can support it in many ways, but then you have to understand where the limits are that you cannot support it any longer. So there are both sides that can have certain amount of support, but there are certain things you cannot support as well. So who ended the Vietnam War? I was thinking until now, until recently, I was thinking it was, I forgot his name, the, the television. Uh, 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 Ronald Reagan. No. T t t television anchor, which went to, to, to Vietnam and came back and spoke on television. I don't know who that is. That you're oh. talking about. Uh, yeah, but, uh, but then I realized that he possibly did it after being uh, allowed that by, by the cabal. So who was actually making the decision to end the Vietnam War? To end the Vietnam War? Yeah. It never really ended well. The Vietnam War was uh, still going on through the Nixon administration. And it still goes on in some ways, in small matters. It's never been really resolved in some ways. So it's, they did pull out of it, but it's never been truly resolved, in my opinion. But you know, the main uh, withdrawal of troops was very, very decisive. And you dropped a lot of, uh, uh, territory and uh, how do you say uh, the allied Vietnamese they were some of us saved but others were left so you escaped on helicopter so that was a very very strong decision but and I assume it was done not by Nixon by by some by somebody else above him was above it Nixon yeah well we gave him the information uh-huh that was necessary for, for pulling things out in from the Vietnam area. But uh, I don't think that there was somebody above him that could take care of it. We, there was those of us who had authority to advise, and we advised him to get out of it. I see. I assume he was very much controlled by the by the cabal and international bankers. Yes, he was. There was, the thing is about Nixon is that he was not corrupt when he went into office, but the office and the power did corrupt him. And he became, uh, he used his power unwisely. I don't know. I uh, I haven't studied it, but uh, I believe he was pretty moral even before he went went to power. He was not, but not as corrupt as he was at the end. As he, as he went through his terms, he became worse and worse. He wasn't as corrupt going in as he was coming out. 
But he was not a moral giant, no. There was no question. Many of the presidents followed. All right, so um, another thing, how do you like LBJ? Lyndon Johnson? Yep. I actually liked Lyndon Johnson. Uh -huh. I actually thought that he was, um, he used all of his facilities and faculties in a, a very good way. He was clever and manipulative, but yet he was also doing it for a, the best causes. He, he wanted to actually see the people benefit from what he was doing. And even though he may not done, have done it the most upright and moral way, he did have the people at, in his heart. He did have them in his mind. Uh, he, went, he liked the political power, of course, but he also wanted to, to uh, do the people right. So was his, uh, why, did he, why didn't he take the second term? Uh, was it because the cabal didn't approve him? I think that he had had enough. He had been through all of his life getting to where he, he wanted to be. And once he reached that office, and once he realized that he could do it, it was done. That, that, was, that challenge was over. It, he did not want to. I really doubt it. I, here I just really doubt it. Why I think... do you doubt it? He was, he was a very interesting and different kind of individual. He was not power crazed, but yet he was. There was both sides to him. There was the power and then he, there was the people. But he wanted the people to be uh, helped as well. And once he reached the high office, he realized that maybe he was not the best guy for the job. No, no, I don't believe that. I think somebody just pushed him away. I think, I think that was, uh, the decision wasn't made by him. I think it was someone else. I think he just, I, he do was not, a, I do not agree. Because think, nobody yeah. else could push him away. There was nobody else in that power to do that. Um, they had nothing on him that was that bad. He would have had to have been able to blackmail him in some way. They, they had nothing on him in that way. Well, there was lots of, lots of stuff on that. Lots. Yes, but it was all out in the open, most of it. Most of the politicians knew everything. So they couldn't really blackmail him about things that everybody knew about. All right, so that question, <laughs> we disagree. You know lots more than I, but, but my feeling is that he wouldn't leave unless he had to. No, that's not necessarily true. Sometimes people just realize when it's enough. And I had many discussions. Well, I didn't have that many discussions with him, but I sort of knew who he was and uh, got to know how he worked in many ways. He was, he was driven by some very unusual things. All right, so... Um... Do you think he was physically homosexual? I do not know that for sure, but I have heard that rumor. Yeah, just I, I, I don't judge it, but I think uh, it makes a lot of sense that people in power, they have to physically connect because uh, that, that's a way to unite them. And uh, they spend so much time together. So physicality makes a lot of sense. I wouldn't doubt it. Um, I heard that he, that there was some activity of that nature, but it's hard. It would be hard to prove. All right. Um, part of my question, but were you homosexual, bisexual? Did you use uh, the sexuality to connect to people? 
There were man. times when it was necessary. Right, because you also had uh, people who helped you a lot, and uh, there was a, a, a relationship which you developed, and some of these relationships helped, helped you a lot. Yes, it, it was very, I, I, I don't know how to categorize it, but it was for the good of all. Right, right. Um, so what do you think about Israel? I think it's a dangerous place because I think that it is going to be the focus. It's too much in focus for the entire world. Right. I mean, it will be, they will be the center of some very, uh, the center of some very, strong decisions right I mean that's that's I think the part of the whole drama lots of stories come to that place yes so uh, do you think Ashkenazi were uh, an alien tribe that came to earth re recently who Ashkenazi there are lots of aliens here, and they could possibly be alien. I am not allowed to reveal that. All right. But it's time for me to go. Uh, one last question is, um, uh, did you meet aliens face to face? Yes, I did. Which ones? The ones from Area 51. Oh, yeah, yo? They would, did not have a name at that time. They were gray beings, but so they were called the grays. Right. But they were actually, as I understand, you, yo. Uh, did you like them? They were very interesting and, yes, very likable. Did you feel anything special from the energies? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. And they were able to feel energies. They were able to understand the energies of each individual as they were. And if we were, if they could sense goodness or negativity, they did respond to that. I guess it's much easier to uh, do the politics when you realize there is life the smart beings above. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. It was nice to meet you. I ha I still have many questions which I didn't ask, but it was a, a great uh, connection. So please help me, if you can, uh, with my uh, projects. I, I, I think your expertise would be very helpful. I will do what I can for you. Thank you. Good day. Good day. Thank you much. Hello? Hey, Jim, welcome back. Yes, hi.